Hi everyone. So our next talk is under and under Python secret functions by Chickting. I mean the title looks pretty exciting, and yeah, the stage is yours now. Thank you so much, and hello everybody. Uh, I'm Chick, and today I got to talk about some Python secret for you. So sit back and buckle up, and we gotta just dive into what's Python hiding behind the scene for us. So um, first of all, I think I would just do a brief introduction of myself. I'm Chirk and I love open source projects. I have been creating some projects in the past. I've been involved in some projects in the past. I, of course, have contributed to different uh, projects. Some of them you may have already heard about, like Pandas or Daychitil and projects like that. And But now uh, I'm very lucky to be working full time for a um, open source graph database uh, at, at Terminus DB. So uh, if you're interested in like graph database that can do Git kind of things, then talk to me afterwards, or uh, you will see my contact detail at the end of the talk as well. Um, but I'm not going to talk too much about this uh, because this talk is not about graph database. Um, the next thing that I want to tell you about me is that I organize a lot of different uh, events for the community. There will be a PyData Global Conference in November coming up. And also there will be another conference uh, in December. Uh, so both of them will be online. Uh, you can join for easily uh, by sitting at home just like now. <laughs> and also I stream on Twitch. Um, so if you want some more Python content, if you want a little bit more of me, you can um, follow me there and watch me weekly. <laughs> um, also, there's another thing that uh, we organize with PyData Global is a humble data workshop. What does it mean is that it's a Python data science workshop for beginner. It's free. Um, all you need is to get a ticket for PyData Global, which it's very affordable. The minimum that you need to donate is 10 USD. So um, it's, it's like yeah, so it's, uh, it's, it's, I think it's, uh, it's very cheap compared to the previous uh, conference that I've been to at PyData. So, um, but this workshop uh, doesn't have any course on top and it's meant for beginners. So if you know anybody or if you want to learn some data science uh, with Python, then uh, you can go to our website and find it out. Um, so let's start this talk. And um, I'm going to talk about Python internal functions. And um, this talk will mainly be shown uh, in a Jupyter notebook. So it's got to be live. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, so this is the Jupyter notebook. I know it's a little bit small, so let me zoom in a little bit so you can see it a little bit better. Um, I hope this is okay for you. Maybe I can zoom in one more time just to make it easier for everybody. Okay, I hope that you can see it all right. And uh, if not, maybe the host can kind of give me a shout. Okay, so um, so this is a Jupyter notebook. I hope you know, like this just lets you do some Python thing with it. And um, so you can see here, uh, if you have done it in the past, that I have written a class in Python. And uh, if you write a class, then usually the first thing that you would do is to write a dunder init function. So Okay, so what is Dunder? Dunder is something like this. Uh, I don't know whether you can see my highlight here. So uh, before the init, so you start with two underscore here, so two of them. And then, uh, so it's called Dunder because it's double underscores. I think someone very smart come up with this name. I think it's a brilliant name, so Dunder. <laughs> it sounds funny as well. Um, so Dunder init function is something that like, a lot of Pythonisters kind of like in the blood. They just like, okay, whenever they write a class, first thing, df done the init self, okay? So again, like uh, for all these methods, you see the first thing that I pass into the method or function, it depends on how you look at it, uh, because some people study data, uh, some people study computer science, they'll be like, oh, it's a method because it's a binder function for a class. I don't really care about names, so bear with me. Um, so yeah, the first thing that you pass in is self. So this means that you pass in the object, the instance of this class itself uh, here in this, functional method. Um, so what is an instance of a class? So when you uh, create, so when you have a class, you can create an instance of a class. And when you create an instance of a class, this init will fire, it will just get executed. So you can, with init, you can do some like kind of uh, initial settings with this class instances. Um, you'll see how it worked later because uh, I put the print here. So you see whenever I call this init, uh, thunder init function, you would see this got printed out 
so I just put a lot of print here just to show you what is going on inside. Okay, so um, I, after that, look at here down down here, I have my print. So uh, my print is just like your normal method, right? I think you have already done it before. Um, so it's just like an, anything here in this like kind of, um, you know, a binded function or method that you have passed in self, and then you can pass in any parameters that you want your user to pass in. So here you write a function, usually as a good practice, you would write a doc string here. I will show you why you would like to write a doc string instead of a um, comment uh, afterwards as well. There's a benefit of that. So uh, now this function is very, just very so simple. It take in the user's message, it, it will just print it out, okay? And as, uh, but in my doc string, I, as a good practice, I always tell people what will be the parameter, what are you expecting from a user? And of course, explain what it does. Uh, it, by the way, this doc string is called a NumPy style doc string. So if you want to learn a little bit more about how to write doc strings and different style and all this, come to join us in the doc sprint. Uh, I would actually have time to explain to you a little bit more about doc strings. But uh, again, I won't dive into the detail here. Um, so after these two things, right, that we are familiar with, the done the indeed and my print, uh, well, we have something that is slightly different. Uh, we have a um, method or function that the name start with an underscore. So um, yeah, is well, what, what does it mean? Like, why, why do you start with an underscore? It looks a little bit funny. Well, uh, because this is an internal function, it's just indicate that, oh, this function is not meant for the user to call it, it meant for the developers to use it within maybe doing some kind of internal um, operation within this uh, instance class is supposed to be, you know, uh, providing itself some kind of functionality because, well, we all have experienced that sometimes the code get really big and we want to, you know, put a section of the code as a function so uh, we can reuse them. So it's more organized, so your code look a little bit better. Um, so this is the actually the purpose of this uh, underscore my phone is that so it's providing for the other external method that okay I have some helper function here that's sitting at the back seat that is not supposed to be you know called by the user. Uh, of course you can still write a doc string but uh, it's less important here because it's supposed to only um, help the developers. Uh, of course you can still write it, it will be helpful for your fellow developers but uh, it's not super important like the my print. Okay. So uh, I also, if you call it, it would just print out that, okay, this is my function, you shouldn't call it. Um, and then there's something that is similar, but slightly different because it starts with two underscores of thunder instead of underscore. So uh, I just print out, this is a secret function. You should really not call it. You will see why in a bit. So, okay, I have uh, planted a lot of seed of like what is happening here. So let's have a look. So of course I can create an instance, uh, but before that, because it's too big a notebook, I have to run the first cell first. Otherwise it's not a register in the kernel. So uh, yeah, I have created an instance. So uh, my object is an instance of my class and uh, I've created an instance. Yeah, so straightforward. And of course I can print out a message. Yeah, this is my message. Uh, this is something that you may have seen before. It's not too uh, unfamiliar. So uh, here, uh, another thing, so I, talk about, um, well, why a doc string is a good idea is that if you're using Jupyter Notebook actually, uh, or uh, actually, or in your Python interface, you could, I think you may be able to do that. I haven't tried that though, but in Jupyter Notebook, you can do question mark and then put in, um, you know, my print. If it's a standalone function, you can call it my print, but because it's a part of my object, I would just my object dot my print. And you will see that, oh, what's going on here. Um, there is something that has popped up. This is kind of like an internal dictionary that you have written for your user. So even if they are, let's say they are coding on the plane, I don't know why, um, but you know, if they don't have the internet access, they can still look at uh, this documentation that you have put in in the doc string. So it's very handy for your user, especially, you know, you shouldn't be expecting everybody can Google anything at any time, right? Uh, because they may have bad internet connection. So this is really, really handy. Uh, so especially when you're using pandas, uh, you can do that as well. You can just like pd dot read underscore csv you can put a question mark in front and you will see oh what you should put in when you're reading a csv so 
that's one thing. I can close it as well. So go back to normal. And uh, okay, so now let's call my func. Okay, so of course the name is start with an underscore. I put it there, and I can still call it. It just say that oh yeah, you shouldn't call it uh, because I put the print there. And oops, a little bit like shaming here from the developer, uh, which is myself. Okay, so um, another thing. So okay. I have called my phone. I've successfully called your internal function. Can I call your secret function? Well, I'd call this Dunder function a secret function. So uh, it, it cannot, uh, it's a secret function. So um, yeah, so uh, it's just, I just get an error from Python saying like, oh, it is, uh, there's no attribute secret function, you, uh, something's wrong. So what's, what's going on? Where is this secret function? So let me introduce you with a Python magic. Um, it's not magic, it's just how Python work. Uh, it, it's this DIL um, built-in function that you can call on any instance of the class or actually anything because in Python, anything is like, even a number is an object. So you can have a DIL object, you know, like what, whatever that it is, you can put a DIL string there, it will still work, I think. Uh, see if I can show that. So this is just uh, at lib, uh, I didn't plan that. But if you say, uh, hello, here that, yeah, you can still put DIL in anything, a string or a number, you can put DIL one there, you, you, you st still see a bunch of things. Um, but uh, I want to see what's inside my object. So I put DIL my object, and you see here, I have my fun, which is, uh, well, that's why we can call my fun, because this is part of the instance, it's bind, this is a function that's bind to the instance, okay? And my print as well. Uh, there are other things, these are all like, it looks like the init thing, right? Start with a dunder, end with, end with a dunder, these are all default um, attributes that's bind to this object. So, uh, for example, str just means that you could, uh, change it into a string representation, um, a doc uh, for a doc string. Um, so the init is here as well. So these are all the things that we uh, are a little bit familiar with. Some of them we rarely use, so we don't know what they do, but that's fine. Um, so you see here, this is a very strange um, attribute here. So underscore my class done the secret function. This look familiar, but yet it's not something that we have created, right? So let's have a look. So let's run this weird uh, attribute. So uh, spoiler, actually, this is a binder function. So again, you can call it like this. Um, yeah, this is actually our secret function. Um, Python actually rename your secret function something else. So it kind of uh, stop people from, uh, you know, maybe go to GitHub and looking at your code and then see, oh, there's a secret function and I can just call it. Uh, no, people can maybe do that with your internal function, with my fun, but not this secret function. So uh, this is a little trick that Python do to just to make this uh, secret function a little bit more secure um, so people can't just directly call it by accident. Um, so uh, this is very neat. Uh, you can hide something uh, with your class that really, really like stop people from calling it. You can still call it with your, for example, if your my uh, if my fun is calling uh, a secret function, for example, here, if a uh, secret fun is calling um, self dot, uh, oh, sorry, it's the other way around. So it should be my fun is calling, let's say self dot uh, secret uh, function. Uh, sorry, I just copy and paste. I'm so lazy. <laughs> I'll just copy and paste here. Uh, can I call secret function in my phone? Yes, you can. Uh, let me just do this again. And now if I call my phone, you'll see that. Yeah, it will call secret function uh, without problem. We can just call it like this, but uh, in, but outside you can't just call it like here. You, you It still doesn't work. Uh, it just work in my phone. So yeah, so it's just locked the secret function to be only used uh, internally, uh, not being able to use by the user, by accident. Um, so uh, that's that's fun. Shall we do something more? Sure. Um, so this is my list. Well, it's a list uh, that I think all of you know. Uh, if you have already have some experience with Python, this is kind of like in your 101 book that you could create a list object in Python. So what is inside a list? So have a look. And uh, we can see all these things that you have seen before that is method that could be used with a list, you know, append an element in the list, you know, pop an element from the list, all this stuff, you know, reverse it, sorted, whatever. Um, there are also other default things that supposed to be, you you won't call it directly, but you know, again, now you know all the secrets, so you can do that. Um, 
there's this get item. So this is quite unique for a um, list object or actually any sequential object like, you know, um, a dictionary or a, um, a, a tuple. They, they all get this get item uh, method here. So let's play around with this one. Uh, so yeah, my list get item, what is this? It's actually a, a function that you could call. So uh, how about I call get item zero? Uh, give me one. So actually, it works like this. So it's the first element of the list, right? So one, two, three. So the first element is one. Um, and uh, so basically, when you do this indexing thing, so the square bracket for a list or a tuple, and then this get item is called. So uh, let's do something funky. Uh, I create a sequence class, which is a not a normal sequence class because I well I well. Uh, do the same thing, you know, in it and just say, oh, I create an instance. But this time I add the get item and this get item again will take in an integer, but it will just return the square of the integer. It doesn't make sense, but it's fun. So <laughs> I create this my sequence object. And then, so this time, actually, I don't have anything in the sequence, right? Remember, I just in it and just print out create an instance. I didn't store anything or you know, it's just, it's not like a list or tuple or anything. So, but I can still use this square bracket and it would give me the square of three, which is nine or a square of 10, which is a hundred. Uh, yeah, this is uh, funky. Um, so for my list, which is a normal list, you can have length, right? So one, two, three, the length is three. Um, how about my sequence? Well, I don't have it. It would give me an error because uh, I, this is an artificial thing, right? I created, it doesn't have the length thing there. If you run a DIL, then uh, you can see L. So yeah, it's, it's not here. So you, you'll be able to see it here if, if I have it. So no, um, what should we do? Uh, we could create it ourselves. So <laughs> uh, let's do something naughty. So the F uh, length and then self, remember the self, this is a common mistake by beginners. Uh, return just put 999 here uh, yeah so why not uh, so now I can call link uh, oh, oh I can't because I haven't run this again okay now I can do it and it would just give me 999 <laughs> yeah this is uh, yeah again naughty and funky uh, and now you can see that uh, it's here length is here added because I added it myself and um, so another thing about list or triple or dictionary that um, is is called an iterable it's because there is a method inside uh, I don't know whether I can show it here maybe I can show you my list here so what's in my list it was be able to see there's an iter here so this iter means that uh, whenever I call an iter function on my list, it should return something that uh, is an iterator of my list. So you can see that. Uh, so now I have the iter for my list, which is an iterator generated from my list. And uh, if I call next on an iterator, oh, it's one. So what if I call it again? Oh, it's different, it's two. What if I call it again? So three, okay. What if I call it again? Okay, now this time you, I can't call it again. Uh, it exhausted itself. So. What happened is that whenever you call next, it will just give you the element of the list from the beginning to the end. And uh, when it re reaches the end, there will be a, a kind of an error-ish kind of thing that is called stop iteration uh, that basically say that, okay, I have exhausted, I can't give you next anymore. Um, so uh, this is cool. This is kind of like a for loop, right? Because like, for example, I have a for loop here, I put my list in here. So one, two, three, uh, what happened in a for loop behind the hood is, is that whenever I write something like this, which is a for loop, uh, what it does is that uh, it will call iter on my list. So it generate an iterator for my list, just like what I did here. And then x will just be calling next to get the next value in the iterator in my list. Um, so I print it out, so it will give me one, two, three. That's something that we are all familiar with. What about this my sequence, this naughty boy here? Um, of course, I can't do this right now because it's not an iterator. Like I don't have the iter, I don't have next, you know, so I can't really do this. This is not acceptable. So what magic I gotta do next is that I gotta, you know, uh, have fun. <laughs> I gotta put in here, the uh, um, 
so what I'm going to do is that I will have an iter first. Uh, sorry, double underscore always, because uh, I'm messing up with the default settings. <laughs> so uh, I would just, you know, return myself as an iterator. Why not? Uh, so return self. <laughs> and then, because uh, I am returning myself as an iterator, so the characteristic of an iterator is that I will have next, right? So I have to put next in here. Yep, so self. And I can return. Uh, what do you like? What number do you like? I feel like seven is lucky, so I will return seven, okay? So I'll just return seven because it's my lucky number. Why not? Um, yeah, so let's try to create this funky instance again and um, well everything just worked the same right i can still do this thing i can still have length which return 999 um and now if i look at my sequence you would see um next it's is in here this is what i want iter is in here as well this is what i want great and um this time i can connect my sequence it will give me seven. If I run it again, it will give me seven. Uh, well, yeah, it, it keeps keep giving me seven and it will never stop. And this is scary because, well, if I put it in a for loop, it will never stop. I don't want to do that. So let's create something that we could stop. So this time I really have to give this, um, I really have to give this sequence somewhere to stop. So let's take in an end when I create it. And then I would just put self dot n equals to n. <laughs> so I would just store this value somewhere. And also I have to store another thing that is a counter. So self dot count equals to zero. So I start with zero. And then when I call next, what happened is that if this uh, counter is less than uh, the self dot n, which is the end of the this sequence, and uh, I will return seven, okay? So I will just return seven. It's a happy, happy place, you know, just return seven. Otherwise, uh, so what should I do is to raise a stop iteration. Okay, so uh, let's try to see if it works. I'm missing something. Yes, I am missing a an N here. So this time I have to put in something as N. Let's put in three just to make it short and simple. So, okay, now I can create an instance. Uh, all these still work the same. It doesn't matter what the length is. It's just return the square of it because this is how I how I put it in. And the length will still say 999 because, well, because this is how I set it. But this time when I call next uh, on my sequence, okay, and then, uh, oh, I've spelled it wrong, sorry. Let me fix it, live coding curse. Uh, okay, so now it's go back to normal and I come back here and uh, run it. So next it will give me seven. So this is the first time giving me seven. Second time it give me a seven. Third time it give me a seven. And the fourth time it still give me a seven. That's, this is weird. <laughs> this is not it's supposed to be. Oh, I know why, because I forgot to increase the counter. Yep, again, uh, live coding curse is always something wrong with it. And I'm used to it, that's fine. Don't worry about me. And then I would just quickly, quick, quickly run uh, three times this thing. Sorry about that, it's a bit tedious now. And now, yeah, now it stop iteration. Finally, it know how to stop. So we can now put it in a for loop. Uh, sorry, as EQ here and, oops, it's not printing anything. Oh, because I didn't give back anything, right? No. Oh, I know why, because I have exhausted myself. So let me create an instance again, yeah. So three times a charm. So uh, let's let's create the sequence object again. So now it's refreshed uh, because previous previously I exhausted myself. So it was just like okay, it reaches the stop iteration before already before I put it in a for loop. But now I've refreshed, so it should be fine, and it will give me three sevens, which is a very lucky number. I love it. And um, yeah, so this is the end of the demonstration. Let's go back to the slides. And uh, I only have a few slides to close this talk. And uh, so what is my thought on this kind of craziness? Uh, so first of all, about the internal function and secret function, it's kind of like an option that you can, you can choose as a developer that whether this internal function is a kind suggestions to tell your user that 
oh, it's, this is an internal function. We are not expecting you to use it. So use it with a grain of salt and the documentation may not be full. So, but you can still use it if you know what you're doing. If you have looked at our code and you, you know, this is open source, right? So yeah, look at our code and decide whether you want to call it. Or if something that I really have to restrict you to use it because this is super dangerous, you will, you will mess things up badly. Um, so yeah, like uh, I think uh, as a Pythonista with some experience, I see most of the internal function are just single underscore not under. So I think this is because a lot of time we are writing code uh, in an open source setting. So there's some openness, there's some transparency, and we trust the user that they will make their own decision, uh, whether maybe develop, they develop some plugin for our library, then they may want to call this underscore function. So yeah, that's cool. That's something that I like. And also Python is so flexible and yes, so powerful. You see when I mess around with the my sequence object, basically it lets you do anything. So that's why I love Python is that it's so easy for the beginners to use because it's hide all this complexity behind the scene. And uh, so beginners can pick up Python and start using it quickly. I think all of you must have already experienced that. But yet it is so powerful that for a more experienced user, for advanced user, they can mess with all these internal settings and basically they can do anything with Python. So this is so good and I really love it. Um, so uh, my take on all this stuff is that don't overlook the hidden beauty of Python. Um, so yeah, this is the last slide of my talk. And here is my um, contact detail again. Uh, so if you want to know anything about this topic or anything about graph database, you could talk to me. Uh, you can uh, basically find me on Twitter or anytime, you know. Um, yeah, so that's it. Uh, I think I have a little bit time to take a few questions. So if uh, if there's any, that that would be great. Sure, it was a great talk. Uh, we have a couple of questions that I'll uh, read it out to you. First question is, what is a binder function? Uh, okay, so this is the, the the function that I mentioned a little bit. So it's kind of um, an attribute of, so when you create a class, you create all this like my func, you know, uh, my print and all this actually like they are function that is bind to an instance of a class. So these are all the, uh, the, the functions that bind to it. Uh, some In some other programming language, when you learn it, they, they call it a method of, of that instance of, of, of that class. So yeah, it's, it's just different naming, but in Python, because a, instance of a class can have different attributes. So it could be, you know, attribute as an object, you know, it could be a string, an integer that you store like the n and the count in my last example, or it could be a function. A function is also an object, so it could be bind to an instance of a class. So the so, second question uh, we have is, how can we use the dunder function if user can't even call it? And where can it be called? Oh yeah, so if you remember my uh, demonstration, so as the dunder secret, uh, my uh, secret function can be called by my fun. So it could be called by the, the, the bind function, the method of the class itself. So it could be called by its fellow uh, method, you know, that sitting inside the same instance, but it can't be uh, called uh, outside. So this is why uh, this is a secret function is only meant for internal use, not for external use. And so far, the most asked question is, where can they find Oh, you Do like you the notebook. <laughs> OK, oh, so yeah, uh, <laughs> right. So what can I do? Uh, actually, I've given this talk before, but nobody really asked for the notebook. But what I can do is that I can put it on my GitHub repo. So you can see my GitHub handle there. So uh, today, within today, I would up, upload it uh, to my GitHub repo. So if you click on my repository, you will find it. I think I would call it something called Python internal function or something like that. Uh, so yeah, just find it on my GitHub then. <laughs> That was the last question, uh, and thank you very much, Jake. It was an amazing talk, and yeah, have a good day. Yeah, thank you so much, and enjoy the conference. <laughs>